So now, hey, we are talk uh, to Raymond Keen, OBE. Um, Ray, it's so great to have you with us here in our Goethe MoMA. Thanks you very, very much. You published uh, at the beginning of July the article, The Touchstone, Touchstone of Intellect. Um, and, and there are different connections to Goethe and, and other persons, great persons of literature. And uh, let me ask you uh, the first question, what, which person or event or what leads you to, to, to Goethe? Well, um, I went to a school called Dulwich College that you may have heard of. It's one of the English public schools. And the public school in England means private school. And it's one yeah. of the anomalies of the English language that a public school is actually an exclusive private school. So I went to Dulwich College and uh, we started off studying a, a broad spectrum of different subjects, you know, Latin, uh, French, physics, chemistry, biology, geography, history. Mm -hmm. And I gradually learned over the years that I was completely hopeless at physics and maths <coughs> and anything scientific. So I gradually uh, turned more and more towards specializing in um, English, French and German. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I, I, um, I started learning German when I was, I think, 15 years old. Mm -hmm. and I found it quite easy to understand. And um, then we gradually started to uh, move forwards from just studying the language to studying the literature. And we started off with the uh, easy stuff like uh, Schiller. <laughs> Very easy stuff, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and Goethe's Egmont. And uh, eventually uh, the, uh, the teaching staff at the, the school thought that I was able to um, cope with Faust. So I read Faust part one for the first time in 1966 yeah. and I, I found it absolutely um, riveting, absolutely riveting. And I managed to acquire the uh, recording of the Gustav Gorinchen's ah. aud audio. Of, yeah. uh, it, it, it was a film, but there was an audio tape of it yeah. with yeah. Gorinchen's um, performing his famous role as Mephistopheles. Mm -hmm. and, um, uh, this led to when I got to Cambridge, I um, started off studying French and German, and I quickly dropped the French and focused on German. And we had to do a special paper, you know, one paper that focused on one thing. So I chose Goethe as Goethe. my special paper. So I, I read a lot of things Goethe wrote. <coughs> I then read Faust Part Two, which I hadn't read before, which is somewhat more difficult. Definitely, yeah. And, uh, it, uh, on my desk upstairs, I've got the. Uh, uh, I have a number of books that are, are always there. I've got um, Schiller's complete plays. I've got the speeches of Cicero, and I have the complete works of Goethe in 19 volumes. It, it's it's absolutely a fantastic. And we come to Faust and Goethe and so on, but let me introduce you, uh, Raymond. Uh, Keen is an English gr a chess grandmaster and chess organizer and a journalist and author. And you, Ray, you won the British Chess Championship in 1971. And, and you were the first player from England um, to earn a grandmaster norm, right? Correct. Yeah. Uh, in 1972, uh, 74. And uh, you present your country in, 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 in eight chess Olympiads. Correct, yes. So uh, you so yeah you you know what what an Olymp Olympiad um, mean and Goethe was mentioned very often as an um, Olympia Olympia <laughs> Olympian yeah Olympian right and uh, have so. you a special memory about one of them your first at the age age of eighteen maybe or. In Havana, or well, yes, when I was in Havana in 1966, that was the uh, the very first one. Yeah, <clears throat> and um, Fidel Castro took a great interest in chess, and I watched Fidel Castro play uh, both against Bobby Fischer, okay, and, and against the world champion of the time, 
Fidel Castro. Ah, okay. And um, on one evening, uh, Castro invited us to dinner at the uh, the Palace of Justice in Havana. And um, I remember thinking, well, it, it's obviously I'm going to have to uh, get his autograph. And um, I thought, well, you know, everybody who comes will want his autograph, and they'll probably just show him the menu or maybe a table napkin or something. But I, I prepared in advance, and I acquired a copy of um, his autobiography uh, in Spanish, which was called uh, La Historia Me Absolvera, which means history will absolve me. And I took that along to the dinner, and then uh, he indicated he was happy to sign uh, autographs. And everybody came up with uh, their table napkins and their menus, and I came up with his book. And he- <laughs> Very, very happy. He said, oh, this is wonderful. This is marvelous. He said, for you, Mr. Keane, I signed twice. So he signed the book for me twice. So <laughs> that was quite a memorable evening. You know, dinner so, with Castro. Interesting, interesting. And I hope you, you have uh, this uh, special uh, book uh, uh, up to now in your, um, in your library. <laughs> well, actually, what I did was I donated it to um, a chess museum in America. Ah. Uh, there's a gentleman called John Krumiller in America who uh, has a, a chess collection, a very interesting and important chess collection. And I thought rather than have it uh, sitting on my bookshelf um, with lots of other books, I, okay. I get this collection. So it's now in a museum in America. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, so so great. Ab- absolutely. Chess and and. And, and this is actually uh, your connection. You, you mentioned actually uh, the connection between books, literature, chess. And this is quite an uh, interesting example for, for it. And in your opinion, um, uh, when we come to Goethe um, uh, now, oh, is Goethe for you first, um, first of all, a poet, um, a researcher, scientist? Um, It, it, it's interesting for me. Well, how do you see Goethe? <laughs> well, uh, he's obviously a very multifaceted. I mean, like Leonardo da Vinci, he was what one might call a Renaissance man because he he was a scientist. He discovered the intermaxillary bone in the jaw, which nobody found before. Uh, he was um, uh, arguing with Newton about colors in, in the Farbenlehre. Right. He, had the uh, the theory of the urplanza, you know, the original plant. So he was interested in evolution. Yeah. Of course, he was a poet, but he was also a politician. Um, uh, Napoleon, yeah. Napoleon, I mean, he, he was prime minister of Weimar, he was minister of works, he was in charge of the theater. I mean, he he did everything. And right. you, you see this in Faust, that Faust, um, you know, is simply the best thing he wrote. I mean, when I first started reading Faust, when I got to the point where Faust is introduced sitting in his study, you know, first of all, you have the prologue in Himmel and the theatre director, and then you come down and there's Faust sitting in his study. And I remember starting to read it. And I got uh, prickles coming up my back. You know, when something really exciting happens, you get these goosebumps up my back. I mean, it was so exciting. It was it was just an incredible experience. And uh, I must have read Faust a hundred times, I think. <laughs> so, and, and, and this is very fascinating, what, what you say uh, about uh, the identity and unification. But, but, but um, one day, um, so you have had an, 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 the ambition Array, and that's it's 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 quite I don't know it's it's ambitious it's quite um, very fascinating of one day translating Faust into English into an English version one day yes 